So my wife has the first session, um, and I'm waiting for her. Is she here? She has the first session today. Because. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Wow, you are shouting to God be the glory. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Today is our anniversary. So, 18 years ago, God gave me one of the best gifts in the world. Apart from salvation, this is my wonderful gift from heaven. Amen. I am blessed to be married to this wonderful woman. It's just a blessing. And uh, she will take the other, the first part, and then I will, wait well, just a few minutes, and then I will come and share something with you. We love you all so much. Thank you for being part of this journey that is continuous. Amen. I remember when she came, um, Sister Betty and Pastor Mark talked to me. They said, hmm, this little girl is so shy. Can she even talk? But today, she's a different woman. <laughs> the power of God transforming her. To God be the glory. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Happy anniversary. Sweetheart, God bless you. Amen. Praise God. We have a little surprise. Amen. Praise God. Since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controls, since I came in contact with Jesus, the longer I serve him, the sweeter it grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter it grows. The longer I serve him, my life he bestows. Each day it's like heaven, my cup overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter it grows. Amen. So that is for my heavenly father, my real husband. But that goes also to my earthly husband. The longer I love you, the sweeter it grows. The more that I know you, my life. It stays like heaven. My cup overflows. The longer I love you, the easier it goes. Praise God. Amen. I'm honored to invite you right here to the podium. I know you don't know what's happening, but just come. That's what it takes 18 years of being around with a woman. You know, you get to do what you are not prepared for. Father, have mercy. I have the microphone now. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're going to have a short session of uh, marriage. And uh, we have some uh, young people who want to um, do something. Amen. So please have a seat. Amen. <laughs> you see, this one thing I love about marriage, God rubs all the rough edges of uh, your life. Before I knew this wonderful husband of mine, he would never do that. You have to tell him exactly why he's sitting. You have to give him all the explanations. 
I was constantly trying to convince, and even after the convincing, you're still not getting a yes. But I thank the Lord that the Spirit of God robs his character within us. That's good. I think it's good. It's good. We love it here. I like flowers. Let me be around flowers. It, does it disturb your... Okay. Praise God. And... Uh, one of the things I'm really, truly grateful to the Lord on our 18th anniversary, it's one of the first we're really doing on a Sunday. I want to just thank each one of you for being part of our journey. Um, loving the Lord and loving each other, it's easier when you have people around you who love you. Because they what? They sow into your lives, love, and then you have more love to give your spouse. So those you surround yourself with can actually take from your marriage, make your marriage harder, or they can make it easier. Because we are body. This is my brother in Christ, amen? I'm his sister in Christ. At the end of the day, God will just take off those tags and we'll just end up being all a body in Christ, amen? Praise the Lord. Over to you. Praise the Lord. Come on, praise the Lord. Come on, it's not 18 hours of marriage, amen? It's not 18 months of marriage. It's not 18 days of marriage. 18 years of marriage. Come on, if you're not clapping, you're jealous. If you're not clapping, you're jealous. Where are they? Where are they? Come on. Hallelujah. I'm liking that the singles are clapping even louder. Wow. Amen. So we're going to have a question answer se a session, okay? <laughs> Bishop says, wow, hallelujah. Wow, in the good sense, amen. <laughs> All right, so there are some questions. Uh, we're also going to monitor um, the, the live online church as well. Uh, if you have your questions, prepare them. This is 18 years of experience, whether you are just getting married or you're engaged, or you are single looking for your hallelujah, amen. So this is the great opportunity, amen. So, or you are married too, yes. But I think we want to give privilege to those, amen. Okay, our first question, we'll, we'll start with, let, let's start with you, Mishka. Okay, so our question to you as young adult singles is when looking for a spouse, what are some sort of things that we should be looking for? So non-negotiables and then also what are red flags? So this is saying, okay, green light, go ahead, and then maybe a couple things that are like, okay, if you see this, just run in the other direction, please save yourself. <laughs> so what would you guys say to that? Um, number one, I would say it has to be part of your tribe. In, in, the, in the kingdom, we marry in our tribe. The tribe is the kingdom of God. Yeah. Non-negotiable. Not, I'm not saying if he's a believer, because there are so many believers out there. Mm -hmm. yeah, don't say he's a Christian. There are so many Christians out there. Mm. Right? Is he kingdom? I think we have to narrow it down to is he kingdom? You have to marry in your, in your tribe. Our tribe is the kingdom. So does he have Jesus as his king? And does he know the dominion of Christ in his life? I think that's what the first non-negotiable. The second is find someone who loves the Lord like you. Because soon, if you are just interested in the physical appearance, six months later, it will, it will just be normal. After that, what keeps the marriage is the character. And if you, <laughs> the newly wedded are shouting amen. <laughs> amen. Found someone, find, so find someone who is truly in love with the Lord. If a man cannot love the perfect Jesus, he cannot love the imperfect you. If that man is not madly in love, run for your life. It's better not to be married than to have a bad marriage. A bad marriage is hell on earth. That's true. Amen. And, and that's one of the things that has, I always say that the Lord blessed me because I prayed, I said, Lord, I want a man who loves you more than he loves me. 
you got to measure. If somebody says he loves you, does he love God more than he loves you? Because he will love you and his love for you will run out. If he's not loving the unending source of love. So I, I, I'm just grateful because he loves me. He loves Jesus more than he loves me and he's ready to put me aside for Jesus. That gives me a lot of security as a woman. Because if any man makes you an idol, it's not too long that they would treasure that idol. They'll look for another one. Mm. Wow. Idols only multiply. Uh -oh. So <laughs> once you become the idol of his life and his existence, guess what? After a few nights, he needs another woman or he needs another fascination to be involved in. Yes. Praise amen. God. Amen. Those are prayer points. Amen. Those who are writing, <laughs> let him love God more than me. Amen. Josiah is next. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, the next question is, what surprised you most when you got married? One, that we are so different. Amen. That was my biggest surprise. We are so different. Even though we truly felt like we were the same. You know, when you're in courtship, it's like, you're engaged. It's like, you're just, oh, how we are so much alike. It was the likeness that brought you together. But it's the difference that will keep you together. How? Good question. Because if you learn to know that God made it that way, you learn to cherish and celebrate the difference. Because life will become boring if you're just the same. So the likeness drew us together. We felt like we speak the same language. We love God the same. We, um, you know, we have the same passion for the Lord and for the, for the lost. And uh, what else did we have the same? Basically the same kind of culture upbringing kind of similar though it, i was very different having been brought up in a christian home um but we i got to, to know that we are different um he does not cry with me when i want to cry you know <laughs> he tells me that it is well i'm like there's nothing well in this whole matter <laughs> you know misery looks for company and i wasn't getting company in my misery you know, sisters, how you can just have your sister just have been there and listening to your story and, you know, feeling like, yeah, you're right. The world is almost coming to an end. <laughs> you just need somebody to make you feel that your, your feelings are justified. I didn't find that in him. He was just like, get done with that flesh and get into the spirit. <laughs> Oh, Lord, send some things are coming out today. <laughs> yes. Yes, the second question. Can you repeat that question? There's something I missed with that question. What was no, it? I think I surely missed it because when it is not easy when you are sitting with the most beautiful woman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so... If I miss it often, don't blame me because I'm sitting with the most beautiful man in the world. Oh. <laughs> yes, please. Um, what was the thing that surprised you most when you got married? Yes. Um, one of the main things that really surprised me is how God can bring two people. He, she said it, but I want to put it this way. Two people who look as though, I mean, deeply in love, but very different. And I discovered that women are different from men. Sorry. Because most people get married thinking that they are marrying the same person. You will discover that women are different from men and men are different from women. No matter how the world tries to make it the same, it's a lie. We are very different and we act separately. Sometimes I'm shocked. I'll say to myself, is it this small thing that is making you cry? <laughs> to me, it's normal. And yet, she'll be crying. I say, Lord, what is happening? I used to think that she's just a weak woman. Little did I know that she's a woman. <laughs> but I discovered that she's a woman. Ah, now, 
I come to cherish her and to cherish the differences. Understand you are different and don't try to make your wife to be another man. And don't try to make your, your husband to be another woman. She can share that better. Because sometimes for men, we want to solve problems. We don't want to um, just talk about it. When we got married and she said, let's talk, my God. My mind went through the roof. My, my mind went under the ground. It came back up. Talk what? Because when the woman said, let's talk, pray for your soul. So I started saying, let's talk. I started pondering, what have I done? Have there been a problem somewhere? I started pondering, my mind was going around the circle. So, but, and she'll come and just talk. Something, something that looked normal to me, but it was serious to her. So I discovered the differences in uh, the communication between a man and a woman. For a man, a man wants to solve problems. If there's something not working, tell me. We'll fix it. If it's working, be quiet. <laughs> so, so that's her main thing. So my discovery shocked me. But I learned quickly, and I quickly uh, became um, an understanding husband to know the difference and to know that this is just a woman. Let me not look for another man. They think differently. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But one of the things that our differences did is that it grew me. Okay? So once you get married, there are many aspects of growth. Growth opportunities, actually, in marriage. I, I feel like you can actually grow so much in marriage because you grow your leadership skills because you have to manage people. You have to manage your emotions. You have to manage your spouse's emotions. Um, but for me, one of the things that grew was my risk ability, risk-taking ability. Now, men usually, I, I'll say generally, but most of the men that I know around easily take risk easier. The women want to be cautious and, you know, want to make sure that it's going to work out. Now, when it came to our finances, he's taking all the risk, and I'm like, oh, God. So, of course, sometimes it didn't work out, you know, but <laughs> we forgive and we move on and we believe. <laughs> So, but, but it, it made me know it's, it's, marriage is a risk and life is a risk. You can't just be so cautious and not take risk. And for me, it has really been a learning experience with him because the things that you're so afraid to step out and do, you will never know what is inside of you until you do them. And so being with him has grown my, my leadership abilities um, so specially, and all of you are witness to that, because before, I mean, like, I'm not able, I cannot do that, I cannot speak, I cannot lead people, I was always asking, why don't you find somebody else, um, but he kept on telling me, you have to take the risk to try it out, and to trust God, so I really thank God for that, because um, I have grown being around him, and it is because he is so different from me. I'm the cautious person. He is the risk taker. If I was saying I want a man as cautious as myself, we will not have this church. Isn't it? Because it takes the risk for somebody to believe God. That we are not going to just stay here in Westminster. We are going to go to the nations. And that this little church that we have is one day going to be a big church. Actually, I came from a very big church when I came here. And we're like, maybe that time we're like 10 people. I was like, oh my gosh, what kind of a small church is this? <laughs> and the Lord has grown us and he has been faithful. So your differences are an opportunity for growth. If your husband is the organized person and you are not, you know, you have the opportunity to grow. If your, per your husband is like, you are more the person who does connections, relationships, and the man doesn't care about any relationship. All he cares is about you. That's good enough. It's a start. Not to say that, oh, he's a bad person. No. There is an opportunity of growth in every difference. Amen. So, that's wonderful. 18 years is a ride. <laughs> so, I don't know, how do you keep the flame while already married? Why married? How do you keep the flame going on? 
Well, hmm, that's a serious question. Uh, the first thing I'll say is, I discover in marriage the power of our words. What you say is what you get, especially with your immediate family. Many of the things that I've experienced in my marriage came out from my own mouth. As I proclaim it, it became part of my life. I proclaim constantly that my wife is the most beautiful woman in the world. It's not just a cliche. I'm not just saying it to make her happy. I believe it. Amen. And because I've said it often, it has affected my whole being. And it has kept me very much focused on this woman. So because of that, God has been so good to me. Amen. Let me tell you, there is power in your own words. When you start finding only the bad things to say about your partner, oh, and the rest, and the rest, oh, let me tell you, you will eat the fruit of your mouth. Wow. What you proclaim is what you will eat. Yes. If you proclaim she's a difficult woman, difficulty you will eat. Yes. If you proclaim she's a wonderful woman, she's a beautiful woman, the Lord taught me at the beginning to speak the opposite of what I see. And especially with dealing with things at home, things happening. I started speaking the opposite. Sometimes even in prayer, when I'm praying for my wife, I will say the opposite. I will say, Lord, my wife is this. When, all, when everything is saying that she's this. The more I proclaim to the more I discover that she began, I mean, she, be, uh, she began changing towards those words. And it has transformed her. Amen. And she's a driven person. So you produce or make the partner you deserve. By your own mouth. Amen. Praise God. Wow, that's a wonderful word. And, and I think it applies for every relationship. Amen. Not just for marriage. Amen. We, he would always like bless me. And like I would even overhear his prayers. He's praying and Lord bless my wife. Lord, you know, grant her to know you better. Grant her to be. I mean, I was just so blessed because he's not praying those prayers to make me feel good. He's actually praying those prayers to God who alone can change me. So how do we keep the flame burning in our marriage and our mouths? What you proclaim, what you pray, what you bring to existence in your life. Another way I would say is just being on fire for Jesus. <laughs> Once there's that flame for Jesus, there will be a flame. If he has the flame, I have the flame. Guess what? We all burn. <laughs> we all burn. And, uh, and for us, being on in fire for Jesus, was it was easier to have the wood because we had purpose. There was purpose. Once world conquest for Jesus came into our lives and our marriage, I mean, the vision was, uh, because the vision was always there, but it came, like, revealed to us. It just changed everything about marriage because now you, you're dreaming something bigger than yourself. So one of the things I really, truly see that marriage couples die, the flame dies because they don't have a purpose outside themselves. After one or two years, you have enjoyed every possible vacation site, you know, and maybe what else you do? It's like, then it starts becoming boring and becomes in like mundane. Then you want to get to a new place. You say, if I go to Paris, then you say, oh, maybe you let me go to Alaska where it's cold. You know, you just try to imagine what else can you do. But when God gives you purpose outside yourself and you know that your marriage you're living to have this dream of a hundred thousand churches planted you know every day is exciting every soul added is exciting everything that you're doing becomes exciting and and i thank the lord because he also allowed me to be able to spend a lot of time with my husband because we are ministry together so one of the ways to keep your fire burning is to spend time together even if you have two people on fire and the fires are in separate places guess what <laughs> it's easy for the fire to go off so because we 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 are ministering together we get to travel together it's easier to keep the fire burning so if you don't if you have a job and stuff that keeps you away from each other create the time create the time so that you can be together amen and then keep Keep cutting your wife. Because generally people believe that, uh, you know, uh, I know of a story of a man who said, I told you 25 years ago that I loved you. If I've changed my mind, I would have told you. 
because the wife was longing to hear the word I love you. She said it, he said it when they were getting married. He said, I told you 25 years ago that I love you. If I changed my mind, I would have told you. That is so horrible. That is what I call a, a Bushman marriage. <laughs> marriage. Because the fact is, the words you say to your partner keeps the flame as well. You remind her of those days when you saw her. Right. The things you speak out. Right. Amen. There is power in words. <laughs> Proclaim it. Don't just sit there and just believe that everything will just come around. No, be romantic. That's right. And speak it out. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Begin to proclaim. I want to tell you, this is just for the men. She will speak for the women. But for the men, please, your wife wants to hear it. Get it off your thought. Put it in your mouth and say it. Don't just think that she knows that I love her. No. Proclaim it. Say nice things about her. Amen. Keep the flame burning by proclaiming love things to her. And make her know that you really care. And avoid quarrels. I insist avoid quarrels. But let me tell you. A woman has the ability to keep things for 50 years. And she can remind you where you were, what you said, what you were wearing, <laughs> and how you said it. So when I discover I have a computer at home, I chose to do delete, delete. <laughs> and I kept myself from, I tell people, don't react to stuff. Be a man of purpose. Don't react to things. Don't just react because it shows that you are not self-controlled. Somebody may say something that offends you. Don't react. Because it shows something is wrong with you. Your flesh has not been conquered. And you know if God wants to use you, he must conquer you first. So therefore, the most important thing is this. Always don't say how you feel. Say what is right. Amen? Amen? Sometimes you feel horrible about something. Don't say it. Sometimes, one time, you know, one of the problems with women is that they complain a lot. Mm. Just, let's just say that for now. So women, do you still love me? Yeah. I love you. <laughs> not the one in this church. The one in this church don't complain. The ones, maybe, no, not even online. Somewhere. <laughs> so, the like things to go a certain way right and then they can speak. They're bringing out things. Okay, let me, let's change the word complain. Uh, let, let's, can we put nagging? Or? Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Bring the words now, women. You need the right word. What? Creative. Making... Analytic, yeah. Analytic. Wow, I've never heard of that level. Okay. To reason together, yes. Amen. <laughs> but you know what, uh, people? The temptation is this. The temptation for the man is to give back a word. To explain how right you are. Sometimes when my wife is doing it, my whole being tells me, tell her something. And the devil will speak to me. And, and sometimes this is what the devil does. Uh, she doesn't know this, but I can tell her now. <laughs> the devil will say, don't take this abused. Just tell her that this is wrong. You don't want to hear this. But I have learned to know that if you are a lion, you don't have to fight back. Your very presence cause the people to know that this, uh, your very presence can give a message. I will say this. There are times which you feel as to speak and if you speak you spoil everything. Yes. Whatever you say is wrong. Don't speak. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard this part. <laughs> So, the temptation to speak, you brothers, please don't. Because women love 
a self-control man. Amen. Who yes. is not all over the place, Amen. fighting, responding, That's right. and the rest. That's right. That's Some, right. Sometimes my wife will ask me, you are not saying anything? I said, well, if I say it, you'll be angry. <laughs> so please, I'll say it at the right time. After she has calmed down, I'll go to her. That's why we don't quarrel. Because I don't, there's no need to fight. To fight, I'll tell her, you remember this day when you were saying those things? If we do it this way, it will have resulted to this. To this. Then she now understands. She said, yeah, okay. But you will have explained it. I said, but You're not ready to hear it. I doubt if you were ready to hear it. <laughs> and I don't want a war of words. That's right. It creates an atmosphere in your home. Amen. And that atmosphere of this God invites demons. That's right. When you, are, you quarrel in your house, you invite the spirit of this God. Mm. Remember what the Bible says? Where? There's strife. strife and envy. There is what? Every, every evil, evil thing. thing. Every, not some. Wow. Every evil thing. When I knew the power of words in inviting evil spirits, I trembled. I want my children to grow up in a home where there is no quarrel. Amen. I want my children to grow home in a home of peace. Amen. So therefore, at all costs, even if I die to myself to the ground, I will make sure because I'm the leader of this home, Amen. I must set an example. Amen. We cannot quarrel, we cannot fight. Amen. Amen. Amen? And the more I do it, the more the flames, the more she respects me, soon she will tell me how... I'm a wonderful, she will marry me a million times. I say, Father, can she say more? <laughs> because she discovered that I'm self control. I don't just react to some of her. Mm. Mm. I leave it since, since people refuse nagging and the rest. So, which word do I have? So, I just leave it. <laughs> okay. So for the next question, <clears throat> we all know that you guys are a great example on managing multiple responsibilities at the same time. And so we wanted to ask, can you give us tips about how do you make sure that you don't drop the ball in anything? How do you balance ministry and being a mother, being a father, having to pastor a church, having to have your own business? How do you make sure that you don't just spread yourself to thin, but you have the ability to balance everything properly. Amen. I believe we are working progress. Amen. <laughs> working progress and uh, his grace has been so abundant. One of the things that um, my wonderful husband says, he says, God has been so gracious to us. I think I would just give it on the grace of God because I don't think I've, I've been able to understand that grace as much as I can give you tips. I've just only known that he's carried me through the different the different hats I've had to carry, um, that I've had to wear, I've seen the grace of God. Um, one of the things that the Lord, my mom taught me was, Elizabeth, hang on to life loosely so you can hang on to the Lord tightly. When I got married, I was already overwhelmed even when we, before I had a first child. I was already overwhelmed by everything. Just by the work of the Lord was already overwhelming. <laughs> I was like, so, and then she went... I called her, I'm like, Mommy, this, this, this is hard, being a missionary, being away from home and all of that. And she just said, Elizabeth, I'll give you one advice. And she never told me this again because I held on to it. said, hang on to life loosely so you can hang on to God tightly. So I learned to hang on loosely even to my family, hang on loosely to my business, Hang on loosely to ministry. <laughs> hang on loosely so I can hang on tightly to God. Because whatever you're holding tightly, then God cannot control. And for me, that has been one of my tips and one of my secrets. Everything that we have and that we're doing can be taken away from us. The only thing that you truly have and that you always take with you is your relationship with God. So making that a priority has, I think his grace has, you know, shown me he's faithful to um, take care of every other thing. Amen. And one of the great things which God has blessed the body of Christ, and I say this to let you know that it is one of the riches. It keeps you from not only depression, but it keeps you from being burned out 
and it keeps you also from um, stress is the ability to pray in tongues. To me, it's one of the best gifts God has given you. Amen. If you feel a little stress about something, just go pray in tongues for 15 minutes. You come back a different person. Amen. And I've discovered it again and again. When I notice that things are not going and, and the rest, I just go aside, pray in tongues for about 15 minutes, 30 minutes. I come back, I'm a different man. It takes away the stress. It is like pouring your burdens onto the Lord. For he cares for you. So the, the importance of praying in tongues cannot be overemphasized. If you are not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit, if you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, I'm telling you, you are a happy man. Amen. You, I tell people I don't know depression. I don't know what depression is. The reason is because no matter how sudden a news may be, I can go to the Lord and get comfort. Amen. I can go to him. I just pray in tongues. I pray in tongues until I receive ministry. Amen. When I receive ministry, I come back. So I'm giving you some secret. Don't just stay there frustrated and hitting your leg. No. Go and pray in tongues. Once you seek him, the spirit of God will give you strength to sustain you during that battle. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just the last thing on that, which he, he, um, he teaches, Bishop teaches a lot and tells us everything is spiritual, has really helped me because once you come make compartments in your life that oh i'm a worker i'm a businesswoman i'm a mother you know it makes it you have to multiply your talents or your giftings but once you know that everything that you do is ministry you need his grace all the time and his grace will always be faithful so instead of making i have all these different things to do i have one thing to do uh, represent christ our only <laughs> that's our only responsibility Amen. to represent Christ as a mother, representing Christ as a wife, representing Christ as a businesswoman. And uh, so that one assignment makes it easier for me than diversifying my assignments. Praise God. Hi, congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Um, my question is, as a wife, um, what does it really mean to be submissive? To be a submissive wife and not be dormant and truly allow the man to lead. Wow. Hey. Ooh. My goodness. Hey. I don't think we, uh, that question. That is a tough question. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a really wonderful question. Why do you draw the line? I don't want to be a doormat. That's one of the things I really never wanted to be a doormat. Um, a doormat is like they just walk over you. They walk over your feelings. They walk out over your opinions. Like he can just take a decision. He doesn't need to consult you. Right? <laughs> yeah, like you're just there as an object, basically. Um, so as a wife, one of the, to me, that was my fear, to be honest. I, I don't know why I was afraid about that. But um, <laughs> because you, you don't know your spouse. I was actually, most of the time we get married, we just love people. We don't know them. Isn't it? You don't know them until you live with them. Yeah. Yes, it's taking a risk. You don't know them. You don't know how they're going to treat you. You, you. you just have that feeling that you're going to be treated well. And faith, basically. You know, because at, at the beginning when he's listening to you, taking six hours to talk with you, you have the idea and that vision that is going to continue forever, which is a lying vision. None of those things are going to continue forever. And if they continue forever, he's not going to be effective to do whatever he has to do. So God allows that. That, that idea should draw you in. <laughs> then his real person comes out. They don't want to listen. Men don't want to listen. They don't want you to be sticking for long hours talking and talking. Generally. That's why I've learned over the years, 18 years, I tell him, I have 15 minutes. Do you have 15 minutes to give me? And I have just four topics. That's how I get his attention. Yeah, just four. And when I reach number two, I say I'm done. Now I've kept his curiosity. Like, what were the other two? <laughs> Women, I'm giving you some tricks, sir. Huh? <laughs> See, she's exposing herself right here. <laughs> I'm cashing some clues now. 
praise God because men don't get, they don't know how to handle so much like we do. God has given us the ability to handle lots of ideas at one time. So um, for me, it was learning to be submissive was really learning to get out of control. It, to me, that's that's just what the fear of being in, um, of being controlled comes from the fear to lose control. Isn't it? So I had this thing where I really wanted my husband to be perfect and look good before people. So I, you know, I don't know why women, we think like we know exactly what they need, husbands need to do. How many of you are in agreement? Like if he just does what I do. Yes, all of you, just be honest. <laughs> Like he can, he, you know, you feel like, I don't know if I, I just feel, I I'm honestly will not try to say I'm smarter, but I have just this creative way of looking at the thing because I feel like the man is just looking one direction. So, but I, as a woman, I'm looking all this direction. So if you just go with my idea, especially when it comes to relationships, I'm not talking about all things, business, money, cars, I don't touch it at all. I don't touch it. I don't even want to hear, just go get me the car. I don't want to know, you know, I'm, so, but when it comes to how to manage people, how to talk to my family, you know, how to, you feel like you know better, right? This is how you're going to say it. <laughs> so, I started like that once, he's in leaders meeting and he's trying to answer some questions, some tough questions and I'm trying to tell him that no, this is the best way to do it so that they'll accept what you're trying to say. I pass him a note and he does not, you know, uh, he does not even, it's like he hasn't seen it and I know he has opened it, but he's going on with his own course of action. <laughs> Instead of me, I'm here as your helper, you know. And I know, somehow I know that if he did what I did, the, the, the issue would have been dismissed, you know. But he didn't want to. So I then drew closer to him. I'm like, <clears throat> I'm kicking his feet on the bottom. And then this is what Bishop does. He draws himself away from me. <laughs> and then... Um, I just gave up, but I just gave up. Now I go to God, you know. I start praying. Holy Spirit, change him. And one day the Holy Spirit told me that, Elizabeth, I'm not going to change him. It's you that I want to change. It's you that I want to change. All these, your endless prayers and fasting for your husband are taking you nowhere. taking you nowhere because at one time of course he told me that Elizabeth quit trying to make me be like your father. I'm totally different from him. We have different callings. We have different personalities. And I wanted him to be like my father. That was the whole purpose of me coming into your life. So you become like this man that I've had as a hero. So women, most of the time the fear of control is coming from an idea that we have of who our husbands are supposed to be. You have to lay it down. Surrender it. Let God be the one to make them who they are supposed to be. And you, God has to change you to accept who he is. So for me, that was, that was my fight. The fight of losing the control of modeling my husband in the image of what I wanted him to be. And submission was accepting who he is and who God is making him to be. And enjoying the process of discovery, enjoying the process of falling and rising, enjoying the process. And I, I, I truly saw that the Lord has honored me um, to um, giving up the, the fear that I'm not he's not going to become that person he told me allow me make my mistakes and i'll learn from them and i'm like the whole purpose is for me is to prevent you from making mistakes i'm in preventive medicine i'm not here to go go to <laughs> but that's not how we, men are framed men are framed to say that i'm not i'm lost but i'm going to find a way out myself i'm not stopping to ask for help and if you kill that, you kill the leader in them. 
you become the leader. So I learned the Lord told me, stop, this is my servant. Let me do the adjustment. Because when I gave him to you, I gave him with strength and weaknesses. But you want to take out all the weaknesses. But guess what? The strengths and the weaknesses were put in balance. And only I know how to make the ratios of the excesses. If you do it, you will wipe out all the weaknesses and you'll be changed to a different person that does not fit into my purpose. So I don't know if I answered your question, but that was just my experience. Hallelujah. And just a comment to make it uh, simpler for, for the men. One thing I always share with men is this. Don't demand submission. Um, what I mean is this. Don't carry it over your head I'm the man. that I'm the man. You must listen to me. There's a mic somewhere with somebody that is on. Okay. Don't demand submission. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and this will help you. I always share that the woman submit not because she is inferior. She submits because she knows that God has made you the head. So therefore, the submission is based on the fact that she's submitting because of God. God put you the head. Once you have that spirit of male um, ego and male chauvinism, where you just believe that a woman must submit, must submit, hey, submit, submit, submit. The problem is that you are creating an atmosphere in your home where you are not just a leader, but you are a dictator. Mm. And when you create such an atmosphere, the woman will follow you, and even when you are making an error, she will not speak. That's right. And the whole family will get into untold damage. That's it. Don't make your wife feel as though she must say yes, 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 yes well, in everything. Where her opinion doesn't count. When you are going through a pit, she will know that telling you this, because I know of a lady once told me, um, make a comment and say that I've discovered how to, how to speak to my husband. If I don't want her, him to do something, I tell him do it. And he will do it. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? If, 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 if I tell him do it, he won't do it. So she found a way. Whenever she wants something done, she'll say, I don't want this thing done in this house. The man will do it. <laughs> Whenever she doesn't want something done, she will say, do it. And the man will do it. So don't get to that level where you become like the opposite. You must do things to prove that you're a man. It's not worth it. Because remember one thing. The Lord called you to be a leader and your duty is to make this woman the most beautiful woman and the most happy, happy woman in the world. Yeah. Nobody is happy under dictatorship. That's true. It's most often a lie. You must lead with grace. Amen? Yeah. You must lead with grace. That's simply the secret. Lead with grace. Speak knowing that. Um, my wife listens to me and obeys me and I do my best never to abuse that. Amen. I always li listen to her and many times I will do the things that she has done. Sometimes I will come back later after I have thought about it and prayed about it. At the initial state, everything in me is saying no. But after I have prayed about it and waited and wait, uh, uh, and wait on God, I discovered that she was right. So men, don't just refuse it and say, I'm a man, we'll do, the, we'll do it this way. Pray and ask, is she speaking the right thing? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And one thing I've really enjoyed with you is just the ability to always ask, what do you think about this? Um, I, I truly, truly enjoy that. Apart from maybe just minor decisions like, you know, people coming home that <laughs> before... But on See, every can I help? Can I speak for that? <laughs> the fact is, let me explain to you what she's trying to bring out. She's trying to bring out this fact of, let's say we plan to host somebody for food. 
we are inviting somebody to come for a meal. Now, she mostly do the cooking. But I also know that I do the grill. So whether she's ready or she's not ready, I'm ready. And I can make it work. Are you getting it? Now, I am telling her, these people are coming home. And she, sometimes I forget. I may plan like on Sunday, yeah, talk with somebody and say, oh, you're coming home on Thursday. I forget to tell her on to that Thursday. I say, oh, God, what do I do? Now, I would rather she's slightly offended than to offend the people who have invited. <laughs> because I know how to deal with her. So I can tell her, it's okay. Don't worry, I'll do most of the work. But she's still not happy that I did not tell her till that day. You see, so I've repented many times, but she's exposing the sin that has been repented of. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that there are certain things you have to give up because you just tolerate them because they are not going to change. He's a spontaneous person. So I'm not going to ask him to tell me everything. He asked me my opinion about, you know, major decisions, and I'm okay with that. Now I've learned that he's going to make some decisions without asking me. I give him the liberty. Because if not, you will constantly be forgiving what you have to just tolerate. <laughs> Amen? Praise God. I think that's good. My question's over. I'd like to thank uh, Bishop and his wife for being our leaders. You are great people, and uh, we like uh, the example that you show us as being married, and we appreciate that. Me personally, I appreciate it. The church also appreciate it. Um, thank you. So I would like to take this opportunity to ask these questions. Uh, these are things that we all, all of us go through it, but a lot of time, it's not like we don't want to say, but we have to say to help us. We know that technically, woman is the one that set the thermostat at home, the temperature. So they normally say, happy wife, happy home. That's true. And that's very true and is important. And pastor says something that is very important. He said that avoid quarrels because that brings demonic powers in the house. So if you wake up in the morning and you feel that your wife is not right or something is not right, is that okay not to say anything, to leave the whole day so you can keep peace? But at the same time, <laughs> no, at the same time you feel like the atmosphere is a little bit heavy. Yeah. So should you say, if what you wanna say attacked or is related to her character, is it okay to say or not to say, to keep peace in the house? That's first question. Because like you say, we want a happy home. You don't want to create stuff. So it's good to be very mature and understanding and be smart about it. So should I not say anything and wait the next day <laughs> or address it in a certain way? That's the first question. Okay. The second question will be very fast. Um, statistics saying that the divorce rate is with Christian. Why is that? I don't understand it. Because people that don't know Jesus, they marry, but they say our oh, divorce rate is high among Christians. Is there a problem so we can know what to do next? So to avoid it, if it's something that we do wrong. Thank you. Let me answer the second one first. The second question, I really doubt that statistics. Most often the statistic is used as a way against Christians. What Christians are they talking about? Are they just talking about American Christians? Or those who profess? Or those who profess to be Christians? Many of the people, they say America is 87% Christians. It's a lie. It's a huge lie. If 87% uh, Christian cannot allow what is going on in the government. Right. It's a total lie. I said we don't believe the God of the Bible that we believed. So some of the so-called Christian are not really Christian. Committed Christians who are working with God, I don't think that percentage is high. So, uh, um, and then looking at the Christian world around the world, it is also very low. 
America may be a little bit higher, but around the world, the word divorce is a taboo. It hardly happens. So um, I don't believe that statistic. But it doesn't mean that we should not help Christians to stay together. So, but I just wanted that to come out first. Then she can start with the second one. So, and also, even being a Christian doesn't make that you're going to have a happy home. So many people say, oh, because he loves God. That's not enough to make him a good husband. Oh, she loves God. That's not enough to make her a good wife. The character of Christ and wisdom. You can't build a house without wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. That's why I told young people, don't just look for things that don't matter. The Bible says to have your house filled with treasures, wisdom, understanding and knowledge and many times believers take things for granted so if we are failing in a certain area it could be that we are not applying wisdom understanding of one another our differences and knowledge about how to keep things working amen so part of that is our ignorance so we just say that believers sometimes we're not knowledgeable only about our spirits. But God made your spirit soul and body. So if you don't know how to keep that soul happy, the Bible says, I wish above all things that you may prosper. And even as your soul, that is your emotions, how do you make your emotions happy? Your home will not be happy if your emotions, you don't know how to manage your emotions. So all of that is stuff that you must know for yourself and have your own personal development and personal growth hallelujah it doesn't matter whether you're christian or not christian this is general knowledge amen yeah. praise god first question so that was the second first question oh what's the first question ah, that's a hard one i think no. the man should go with that question well um <laughs> if the wife gets if you get up and the, to say or not to say is a question when the temperature is not good. Well, hmm. <laughs> because the, the, the question is very loaded. Because it has, uh, for me, it has some history in it. Yeah. I shared with you the story of how we got married, giving my own specific case. When we got married, I discovered that my wife had a problem with mood. She has changed a lot when she got delivered. And my wife had a problem with mood and I can't stand moody people. What I mean is that, not that I love you even with your mood but I don't want to be around you. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <clears throat> so generally when we got married when uh, <laughs> I'll leave, go to work, come back home and then when I get back home and I'll just discuss, <clears throat> I'll say, how are you? Fine. Is everything okay? Okay. When a woman answers one word, don't believe her. Because women talk. That's true. When they say everything okay, they will tell you how everything is okay. How the day was. Oh, you know what happened today? Oh, da, 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 da. <laughs> but when the woman gives you one, one answer, my God, sit down and ask her, what is happening? So, when I came back one day, she was giving me one one answer. I said, everything fine. So I said, I got very irritated and angry. I said, but what have I done? Before I left, everything was okay. She even sent me and gave me a goodbye with a good kiss. But, and now I have come back and she is now so looking, so angry, so sad. I started asking, what? My mind went around. You know how a man would think. I ponder about what, what really have, what has happened. And I could not get anything. So I just took my car and drove off. To where? I don't know. <laughs> the plan was, before I come back, she'll be sleeping. So I went to every shop I could go. Walmart, pass a Walmart, Target, just jumping around. Just, I don't know what I was even buying. Just trying to make sure she's sleeping. I got back home. I knew she usually sleep around 11. So I got back home around 11.30. She was wide awake. Waiting. 
very awake and she was walking at the um, at the closet putting the clothes and removing them back putting the clothes she was just making herself busy so that she doesn't sleep waiting for this husband of hers <laughs> so, so, so she was busy very busy so i got there i said my god she's still awake so i tiptoe gradually i went in and sat uh, <laughs> we all have tip to it. <laughs> let me just interject to say that one thing that i've realized is that men get so frightened by women's bad moods yeah. like i don't know why i'm like it's not i'm just i'm not i'm not a lion i'm not a tiger i'm just not having a bad day but they get so oh, oh like, no they don't know the damage they do inside of us. <laughs> so I tiptoed. I went to the other side. I said to myself, this time I'm not doing anything. I don't know what I've done. I don't know why she's looking sad and miserable. So there was a, the, uh, so the scene, there's a TV in our room. I just turned the TV on and I was looking at the TV. And as I was looking at the TV, I was just changing channels. I don't know what I was just, just, you know, when you are, when you are just angry, you don't watch at anything. You just, your mind is thinking about something. You are not, you are not watching anything. Yeah. So I was just changing channels. And then with the corner of my eyes, I will peep through that. <laughs> and the corner of my eye, I will peep through that corner and look at what is happening there. And then continue changing the channel. And I was really angry. I just stayed with it. And then soon, I heard the voice of God. It was a simple question. And I did not know where God was going with the question. It was, my son, you and I, who is greater? I said, Lord, it's not even a contest. I am made dust. I am nothing. You alone are the living God. Without me, without you, I cannot even exist. You are the reason for existence. You are God alone. I am nothing. He said, but who came for the other? I said, Lord, you came for me. You left your throne and came for me. He said, I am the great God. The one who created you, yet I came for you. And I did not only come for you, I died for you. And he told me, if you think you are great, if you think you are the leader of your home, clear this atmosphere. Go and make peace with your wife. Oh God, that was a low blow. I said, Lord, how do you argue with that? So I got up with like a dog with a tail on the I, go, I went gradually, gradually, gradually. <laughs> I came and I held her and I uh, held her and I told her, I said, I just want to tell you that I love you so much. So when I said that, oh God, she started crying. You can say it again. <laughs> <laughs> I away. Did you hear what is <laughs> Oh Lord, how much? demonstration. I love you Amen. so much. Uh, <laughs> it was captured. So I said, I just want to say, I love you so much. And uh, when I said that, oh God, she started crying. She turned and she held me. And she said, I want to thank you for loving me at my worst. So I thought to myself, so you knew <laughs> you were at your worst. So you were tor tormenting me consciously. You were aware. <laughs> I didn't say it to her. I just thought to myself. So you, thought, so you knew you were at your worst. And then I almost told her, you don't know the battle that took me to bring me here. I said, don't thank me. I didn't say this, but it was when going through my Don't thank me. Thank the God of heaven. Because if he never intervened, we would have slept like this. Nothing. I had vowed to stay quiet. But the God of heaven intervened. And he got me to make peace with my wife. And I'm telling you, I got to understand her. And I got to understand what she was going through. Amen. And I prayed with her. Amen. Just to tell you, don't just judge by what you see. Amen. Go for peace. Amen. Because Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Amen. And the Jesus who is in you will bring peace to your partner. Peace is better than having a home in pain and discord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Loving your wife even at her worst is...
is, I think, the takeaway from this. And maybe loving your husband, even at his worst. It's a commitment, for better or for worse. And because you're loving, you're getting, your love will melt away that worst situation because love covers a multitude of faults and bring out the flower and bring out the sweetness out of your spouse. Amen. I appreciate it. Two more questions after all the time. Okay, you good? Uh, thank you very much, um, Bishop and Mama Bishop. Uh, <laughs> I wanted to ask, um, as a man, I want to ask the Bishop, is it okay to spoil your wife? Uh, is it okay to spoil your wife? Spoil her. And now, <laughs> <laughs> let the brothers. The only aspect now. is, if she's all, she's already spoiled when you married her, how do you approach that? Should you encourage her, or sh how do you help her to grow? That one you have to pray in tongues. Shanda. <laughs> you know, the question is a little bit tricky because I don't yet understand where you are going. The level of spoil depend on the spoiler. <laughs> because <laughs> your level of spoil may just be one, two dresses. The level of spoil may be a new car. I don't understand the spoiling, the level of the spoiling. Because the fact is this, you are building and treating. Because when we got married, let me share this, this will help you. When we got married, we agreed on one thing. I will make her the happiest woman in the world. Amen. And she will make me the happiest man on earth. Amen. And we always remind ourselves that. Amen. I want to make her the happiest woman in the world. So I will give up a lot of things to make her happy. Amen. She wants to make me the happiest man, man in, the, in world. the world. So she, gives, she goes a long way to make me happy. And that has been true. So therefore, if that is spoiling... We don't mind it. We will spoil each other. We will make sure everybody, each other. Thank you for that one clap. <laughs> we don't mind. Now, the level of spoiling depends on the person who is doing the spoiling. That is important. But I would, uh, but I would say, uh, many people think that if they do this to their partner, their partner will take, take it for granted. granted. But it's a huge mistake. That's true. If you want to make the error, make the error on the good side. On the generous side. Amen? Amen. Let me tell you, sometime, uh, I, tell, I say this to people. Somebody may come to me and say, oh, this is your friend, is doing this, or saying this, or this and that. I say, listen. And they want my action and behavior to change towards that person. But you know what I always say? I will say, the, let the betrayer be on his side, not on me. Mm. I will not betray him. He should be the betrayer, not me. Mm. Because the tendency is that you can begin to, re, to change. And that's not you. Yeah. You are not expected to go low mm -hmm. when people go low. That's right. Jesus doesn't permit you to go low. Amen. 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 He is the high and lofty one. God. Amen. So he takes us higher. Amen. Don't go low at the level of the person. Amen. So um, I will say, if there is an error, make it on the other side. Spoil her. She Amen. deserve it. Amen. Upon, all the, uh, upon all the billions of men on earth, she chose you. Okay. Come on. Come on. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, it, yes. and, and, and I think that the spoiling for women is in two ways. Men can spoil the wives the way they want to spoil. But if you learn how the wife wants to be spoiled, kandosh, <laughs> and you spoil her in that way that she wants to be spoiled. <laughs> this is another level. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> you, you, you have to understand. That's why the Bible says be with, with your wife with understanding. How does she want to be spoiled? Because you can go and buy a woman all these things, cars and stuff like that, and she's not interested in that. She just wants to maybe spend time with you. She wants your words of affirmation. She wants, you know, so that spoiling should be dependent on the person who is being spoiled. 
that makes it better. Of course, you can always spoil in the way you feel. A man wants to, to, to show his, his glory. His wife is his glory. So whatever he desires, he can pour on his wife. The best. But then remember, let me give her what she really wants. And, and uh, well, and one thing she just mentioned, the wife is the glory of the man. How do you treat your glory? matters. If you treat your glory badly, you miss it. The way you treat your glory matters a lot. If, I, if, if my wife look good, I look good. Are you getting what I'm saying? No so, never, never compete with your wife. Amen. I want her to be the best God called her to be. Let me say something to you that will just to be open. Prophet Sadhu um, made a comment one time about the, uh, the call of God to my life, the ministry the Lord has called, and then announced it concerning, um, uh, uh, concerning the Midian women and the rest. And then he came back privately to apologize to me that he did not seek my permission to announce it. And I was shocked that he did that. First of all, the humility to do that. But I told him, no, 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 no. You don't have to apologize. I'm there to make her the woman God called her to be. Amen. Amen. And I'm there to make sure that she succeeds. Because one day, because a man of God came to our church once and met and frightened me. So I literally fear my wife. Not this bad fear. I mean a holy fear. Because she is God's daughter that God gave her to me. Amen. I will account for what I do with her. I will account if I treated her badly to the living God. This is the daughter of the Most High. Amen. I will, I'm answerable to the Father. And therefore, the way I treat her determines my relationship with the Father. Mm. So therefore, I want her to succeed in the ministry God has called her. Amen? Amen? So when Pastor Bailey came here, some of you remember the story. He shared how the first wife went to be with the Lord and what happened. And, and um, while, he, while he was crying, the Lord appeared. And the Lord appeared and, uh, with an angel. An angel brought um, a certificate of success, of past success, and gave it to him and said, listen, you did well with your wife. You have passed the test. Wow. And you succeeded. Huh. You are a success. And you have been judged past. He was shocked. He did not know that the details of your relationship with your partner is recorded. Wow. One day, God will put it before you. Wow. Whether you failed or you passed the test. But as, as he was sharing it, I was also receiving ministry and I vow that I will pass. Amen. I vow that I will not only pass, I will be excellent. excellent Amen. Successful. I want to get an excellent mark when Amen. I enter heaven. Amen. I have an audience of one, that is Jesus. Amen. And I'm doing everything to get an excellent mark. So I'm bordering to see her succeed. When my wife is being used by God, I worship God. That's Amen. my passion. When God is using her, I worship God. I thank God. And I just bless the name of the Lord. Because she is one of the reasons I want her to succeed. Amen. Because God put me there to make her successful. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. So I'm to spoil her. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um, last question. So my question is, how did you avoid or sift through third-party opinions while you guys were courting? And then even in marriage, because everybody has something to say about, you know, everything. So, yeah. That's wow. Right. This is a powerful question. Wow. This is it's a whole message. <laughs> <laughs> this is a powerful question, and it's a whole message. And I want you to start, because um, after, you want me to start? Or you okay, can start? Let me start okay. so I can summarize it. Um, first, doing courtship, third-party opinions are very important. Before yes. you say I do, get 
get as much help as you can. Amen. Get as much counsel as, as you can. Get your, um, because get your spiritual authorities, because at least for the woman, you're giving that man the place maybe that your father had. He becomes your head. So you have to involve as many counselors as possible so that you don't make a mistake. I advise men, seek help because you're looking for somebody compatible with you. That's one of the things, but sometimes you don't even know you enough to find the right person. You need somebody to guide you and say, uh-uh, this one would not fit into your life nor your calling. You may just like them because you have similar things, but they don't fit. So I would say third party, very much welcome when you're seeking, looking, and while you're trying to find. And to add to that, it is not only important, it is crucial. <laughs> the reason is because the blindness of love. Mm-hmm. When you say you love and you start having goosebumps all over your head, and all those things. <laughs> Your heart is beating when the person comes or the person calls. Oh, oh. You are the wrong person to make that decision. Because you are captured already. Your mind is captured, everything. So therefore, the most the first thing is what are uh, this is what I share with the people in Yahweh. I told them something. I said, Washmani used to say, the mind of the unbiased saints. People will love you. What do they think about it? Are you getting what I'm saying? People who don't hate you. People who don't have problems with you. What do they think about it? If your parents are working with God, what do they think about it? And if the believers around you, your pastor, your um, spiritual leaders, what do they feel about this? Let me tell you something. It is very, very, very dangerous. To just believe that I know and I'll go by it. I have seen people go through hell by that. Go through hell. It is important for you to understand. Once the people around you are there, they are there to help you make an informed and good decision. Amen? 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 Amen. If somebody who loves you is saying no for something, Think about it. Pray about it. Always come to one conclusion. Find somebody that you can listen to when it comes to this marriage issue. In my case, it was my spiritual father. He may be watching Bishop Jack Bang. I told him, I knew that if he tells me no, it will end. So I once mentioned a case. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) In passing, in the past, he told me, forget it. And I forgot it. I'm thanking God today. Sometimes when I see that person, I say, Karaba Shandaraba Bandaraka. Thank you, Lord. I never married this person. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? But thank God there was somebody there to help me. The day I mentioned her to him, you know what he told me? He said, This agrees a lot with my spirit. This is of God. Go for it. Amen. And today, she's sitting right here. Amen. 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 So, as the, especially the spiritual leaders and the people around you, they are just seek their counsel. I tell people, I may give you a counsel, you reserve the right to disobey that counsel, Amen. but it comes with consequence. Yes. <laughs> you reserve the right to disobey. So I'm saying the council is so important. What are they saying? Amen. Today I am blessed. Amen. But after marriage is finished. The input. input is good. But it cannot control your marriage. Yes. Once you are married, it is finished. Amen. Tell your neighbor it is finished. <laughs> so we say we are sorry for you if you have done it already. So that is so important, especially for in-laws and uh, outlaws. So <laughs> <laughs> in- 
in-laws and outlaws. <laughs> So the input of your parents, the input of your siblings in marriage, the Bible says a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. So now you are making your own home. It is difficult for the parents, but you ha they have to let go. You know, he tells his mom, mommy, I'm building my own family now. You had your chance to build your own. So, especially for the man, especially for the man, because the Bible says the man shall leave. So, the input there is really serious. Of course, the woman as well, your loyalty goes to your husband. So, if your parents are having input contrary to your husband, you're only dividing your home by listening to them. Amen? So, the third party input after marriage is very, very limited and it has to really be seeped through the filter of what God is saying about my oneness. If the input is not helping us be one, please stay away from it. Yes. Especially the in-law stuff. Let me explain to you something that has helped us. I protect my family, my wife, from my family. I will not tolerate any statement against my wife from any of my in-laws. It doesn't happen. My mother is here. She can tell you. It doesn't exist. If you come to tell me my wife don't know, I tell no. I'm not ready to hear. I'm not interested. Now, she also defends me to her in-law. So def uh, to, uh, to, 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 uh, to her family. So let's say there's, uh, they bring something about me and oh, well, your husband is not doing this. So no. She will ask them, are you doing it to her own, his own family too? And he stopped it. She did that one time. Are you doing it? Oh, this person died. Oh, your husband did not show a lot of concern. He said, when his elder brother died, what did you do? And he stopped. They were shocked. It ended it. So she defends me to her family. I defend her. By doing that, the family know that they cannot control her marriage. And because I want to tell you, marriages have been destroyed by petty, petty gossips of families. Oh, your wife is not doing this. Your husband is not doing this. Da, 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 da. You should talk to your wife. I said, what? I'm not talking to her. Forget it. Amen? So I defend her, and she defends me. It's one of the secrets. Practice it, and you'll be blessed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah, one last word that I would just want to give to those who are not married. Please, she asked about red flags. One of the red flags is if a man is hanging around you forever, courtship forever, courtship, and hasn't taken the decision, run away. Because if the man is interested, he would have made a commitment. If he hasn't made a commitment, run away. Because some, it's, it's truly one of the things that as, as leaders, we've had to deal with a lot and it's been very frustrating. We don't want you to be in endless, uh, I'm engaged for 15 years. That's a lie. You keep a person's wife or daughter hostage that she has missed her opportunities of other men looking at her. You're always hanging around with her. And then at the end of the day, you change and say, no, I never committed. Yes, you did. Because all of us saw you with that person. So we, we want to be really disciplined in the church um, as we raise up the young people that you don't, you make a commitment. What is this, really? they taught us that what is the goal of this relationship? Is it marriage or we, we kiss dating goodbye, amen? In this church, we kiss dating goodbye. Make up your mind what you're doing with this relationship. Wow, that's powerful. Amen. amen? Hallelujah. I had a story where the man said that 10 years ago he were, he were engaged with her. He never married her. He said, are you a witch? <laughs> so I will say this. Uh, young girls, young brothers, if a man is truly interested into you, young ladies, they will find themselves accelerating the marriage process. 
I always ask people, what are you waiting for? Especially in America. In America, what are you waiting for? To hear God's voice, you can hear the next day. The next minute, right there. Amen? Because the engagement period gives you time also to discover things about the person. And the only time to where you can break is when you are uh, I mean, working to know each other. But it is so crucial that you make her know exactly, especially brothers. I'm more hard on brothers Amen. because the woman is on the waiting side. That's true. Are you getting me? You make her know. And we have precious sisters all over this church. We are saying it so that it does not happen. It has happened in the past from some of the things we knew in the past. But I want to say that please be very clear to the person. If you are not marrying somebody, don't be around the person. All the time. All the time. That's what I mean. I don't mean sitting in the church. I mean, <laughs> don't be around the person all the time. You are constantly calling the person, constantly visiting, constantly going to the person, And then you are not giving a statement. It's wrong. Remember, it is Jesus' daughter. Amen? Amen? She belongs to Jesus. The way you treat that person will determine how God will treat you. Amen? Amen. If you don't like my message, I like it myself. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and sisters, please be wise. Amen. Sisters, be wise. wise. I'm not saying that you should not be patient. But you cannot be patient for 10 years. Just going on patient, 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 patient. <laughs> because when somebody is trying to look towards that area and see the brother there, the person may go him somewhere else. Yeah, so another very pretty girl here. Are you getting what I'm saying? The person is fleeing from there because he sensed that there's a brother in the life of that person, but that is not true. You have blocked her. You have hindered her from getting married because you are giving a false message by being around her. So please, it's wrong. Amen? Finally, the moment you find someone, let us know. will help you. Don't go ahead and start doing some strange things. That's right. Just let us know. And sometimes we have saved people from disaster. Amen? Sometimes we have saved people from... Just let us know. Tell us. This is I'm thinking about her. What do you think? I'm thinking about her. It's important because I'm telling you there can be untold disaster. I've had cases where somebody was interested in a girl that is already engaged. And the person did not know. They wanted to go and talk to her. I said, that's not your wife. He said, the Lord has spoken to me. I said, lie. God did not speak. This person is getting married. And a few months, you're getting married. You come to my office and say, I'm sorry. I did not know. I told you, you said God spoke. Spoke what? So, Come and talk to us. You don't know what is behind. Don't just see somebody looking free. You don't know. Mm. You don't know something is on. And then you come and start going and disgracing yourself. <laughs> it's not worth it. Amen? Come and share it with us. And we will help you. We are here to help you. We are here to make sure that you get married. Amen. We are here to make sure you succeed. Amen. We are not here to stand on your way, Amen. but to push you, to encourage you. Amen? Amen. Yes. Thank you so much. We love you. And we wish the best for every marriage. Amen. We declare that the happiness, the unity, and the love that God has put in our marriage be multiplied in yours. Amen. That where we end it, you will continue Amen. and grow in it. We're declaring that the young couples will begin to experience the harmony, the purpose, and the usefulness in God's house that our marriage has, has exemplified. Amen. We declare that every couple in this church grows in, in greater depth of the knowledge of God Hallelujah. and the knowledge of one another. Amen. We bless God for your lives. 
and we declare that your marriage will become useful in the house of God and that all the single people will find the people, the person that God has for them in the name of Jesus. We decree that every satanic plan against your life is destroyed. Amen. We decree every trap of darkness to cause you to make a wrong decision. We destroy it. Amen. We release the fire of the Holy Spirit Amen. and we burn it in Jesus' name. We decree that if you made mistake in the past, your life shall be corrected. And the Lord will correct it for you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We decree that you will find love again. If you if 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 in the past you failed. And we decree that that which you fail, you correct it. Amen. The Lord helps you correct Amen. it in the name of the Lord Jesus. I bless everyone here and our church online that the right thing shall be done. The name of the Lord shall be glorified and you will experience his favor and the hand of God will come upon you. I proclaim it. I establish it and I say you are blessed. You are blessed beyond the curse in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The favor of God comes upon you. The blessings of God comes upon you. And in the great name of the Lord, I proclaim that that which God has begun to do in your life, the Lord will bring it to fulfillment in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I want you to shout a shout of victory. Glory be to God. You can sit down, please. You know, I planned...